what I'd like to show you now is a new piece of functionality for Push called the Melodic Step Sequencer. So you've probably already seen the step sequencer that we have for drum racks, uh, but now you can step sequence melodies. So I've just loaded an instrument here, bass instrument. And to access the step sequencer, I just need to press the note button. Pressing the note button allows me to switch between live note mode, play notes in live, and step sequencing notes. So first of all, what are we looking at here? Well, using the ribbon controller, or the octave up down buttons, we can scroll up or down essentially the piano keyboard. It tells you on the display here the current octave that you're looking at. Now the notes that you can program information for will depend upon what scale you've got selected currently. So I've selected a C Dorian. So I'm seeing all the notes from uh, C Dorian. Um, it's actually in, uh, in key mode. You have it in chromatic mode. The notes that will work, you can see they're very dimly lit. There's the root note. There's the other notes from C Dorian. And you've also got the notes in between as well. So when we're in, in key mode, all the notes are that sort of ghostly white color. The first seven buttons, first seven pads, they're your seven degrees of the scale. Up here, this decides which bit of the clip will be looping. And it also indicates uh, which bit of the cl uh, clip we're currently looking at. More on that in a minute. Now for me, um, it's really important when you are step sequencing melodies so that you can keep track of stuff to record onto a fixed length of clip. So just to recap, we hold the fixed length button. We can select the duration over which we're going to be recording. So I'm just going to select one bar for the time being. So I've already recorded some drums in. Let me just hit play. And just as with the uh, drum rack, we could just start hitting pads and automatically a one bar clip will be created or we could hit the record button. You don't want to start turning pads on straight away. And now you can see we've got the, the now line, or the playhead, which zips through pads from left to right. So that indicates where we're at in the bar. Down here, these fractions of a bar allow us to choose the speed at which the playhead is moving through. In other words, how small or large the notes are that we're going to be programming. And then we've got this little section up here. This shows you that, well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, we've got eight pads across. I'm currently looking at a sixteenth of a bar. So in fact, my bar will be two times eight, 16 pads long. So to see page two, as it were, I just need to press this button here. And now I'm looking at page two rather than page one. I'm looking at page one again. If I wanted to see the whole bar on one bank of buttons, I just press eighth here. And now you can see we've only got one page to look at. We're now looking at a bar of music. I set that to a quarter. Now a bar occurs over just the first four pads. Go back to a sixteenth, and now we're moved over two pages. Set it to a 32nd, and now we're going over four pages. There's 32 buttons required to make up a full bar. Anyway, let's just, let's just leave it as an eight for now so we can see what's going on on the display. So like I say, the ribbon controller will allow you to select the pitch of notes that you're gonna be programming. And all we do is turn lights on and off start triggering the instrument.
Now at the moment we're dealing with a monophonic instrument that will only play one of those two notes but if it was a polyphonic instrument like a piano we could program a chord in for example. see I can slide up or down the scale using the ribbon controller. We press note again, you can see we've gone into live mode. Just look over to the software for a minute. You can see how that corresponds, how that correlates with what's going on on our MIDI clip. So what else can you do with the melodic step sequencer? Well similarly as with uh, the drum rack, if we hold one of the programmed pads down, we can edit a couple of different properties for this particular note. So we can nudge it left or right. We can change the length of it. We can do that either in small fine increments using this rotary or we can do it in much bigger increments using this rotary. we can also adjust the velocity. Let me hold this pad down. So this is adjusting the notes but we can also adjust automation. So for example, if I wanted to just program a bit of delay or reverb, On that note, you can very cleverly hold it down, press automat here, and just program some automation for that note. Hold the pad, automat. Just breathe a bit of life into that. Now, just let me make a new scene. I'm going to hold fixed length. I'm going to press, let's go eight bars. And let's select a 16th. Now you can see this shows you where we're at in our loop, but when we get here, we've run out of pads. So how do we edit the second set of four bars? Well, this is a little bit of a workaround. I'm going to press a quarter down here, and now I can see my whole eight bar loop on one set of buttons. So now I can go and start to edit the second part of the loop. So you've almost got to zoom out so you can see the whole of your loop here. Select which portion you'd like to edit and then zoom back in again. And one final thing, 
Let's just go back to the beginning. We can change which portion of the clip is looping by clicking first pad and clicking and holding the second pad and that's the area around which we'll be looping. See if I double tap that, I'll just loop it around the first section there. <laughs> <laughs> 